the Frazier 25 automatic. Let's check it out. You know, there are times when a firearm comes along that you just don't know much about and the Frazier 25 automatic is one of those pistols even though it has a pretty rich heritage in its design and even its sales here in the United States made by Bauer Arms which made a really respectable copy of the baby Browning the Frazier 25 automatic is just a continuation of that pistol and made by Bauer Today we're going to continue the mouse gun series and we're going to look at something a little different and this is the Frazier 25 caliber automatic. This is a baby browning copy produced right in the United States. Now one of the things about this pistol is that it's actually a Bauer made pistol. Bauer started making baby browning clones uh, in 1972. Of course after the uh, 1968 gun control act that uh, stopped the importation of a lot of the small little pistols that had been imported into the country and so Bauer made the uh, Bauer 25 from 72 up until 1984 and then started producing the Frazier in 1984 to 1986. I'm not really sure why they went with the name change. I found this at a local gun show this past weekend and I just couldn't pass it up. I really wasn't even looking for one, but the price <laughs> was just really right. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is double check to make sure the gun is unloaded, and we'll remove the magazine. As you can see, it is the European Hill style uh, magazine release. Uh, the magazine is pretty worn, much more than the pistol. Uh, and this may be a replacement magazine, but uh, it does fit this and the baby browning. And of course, we're gonna double check to make sure the gun is unloaded, and it is. Uh, there is a magazine disconnect uh, safety, so once you remove the magazine, you cannot fire the pistol. In fact, it doesn't charge this pistol. It is a blowback design. It is uh, single action, and that means that it has to be cocked before it's fired. Uh, it is a striker fire pistol, and we'll look a little bit more at that when we break it down. Uh, I just recently did a full review on the Baby Browning, and this is really just a follow-up review for those who happen to find themselves uh, with the Frazier or the Bauer pistol. It's really going to be the same information for both. Now, different from the Browning, these were a stainless 416 investment casting pistol. Right here on the slide, you'll see the RB Industries Limited, Frazier, Michigan. Uh, that is for Bauer. Uh, then the safe fire. On the other side, we just have Frazier 25 caliber automatic. Uh, very well finished, precision finished piece. Uh, all the lines are really clean and crisp. And for this gun to have been um, made no later than 1986, uh, it's really in great pristine condition. Uh, they did come with these pearl-esque plastic grips and also wood grips. So you could choose either way. There is a safety right here. It's a lever that comes all the way down and it moves all the way up. Uh, very easy to manipulate with the gun in the shooting position. So you can just bring it up and bring it into safe or even more importantly, in some cases, bring it down to the fire position. Uh, one of the things about the safety though is it locks the slide into place. So once the safety is engaged, the slide cannot be uh, racked to the rear. Uh, of course, take it back even a little bit and you can rack the slide. Um, one of the things about it though is that if you have your magazine in, uh, if you don't have your safety all the way down, it still disengages the striker. You need to make sure that when you are going to fire it that you bring it all the way down. But as you can see, the finish on the pistol is just very well executed. And for comparison, I brought the baby browning out. Of course, we're going to go ahead and double check to make sure the gun is unloaded, and it is. I'm going to leave the magazine in it just to kind of keep it clean 
but uh, both guns are unloaded. The Fraser and the Bauer were produced in the stainless steel, while the Brownings were produced, uh, or the FNs, in the blue steel. Uh, you could special order some nickel finishes. And if you want more information about the baby Browning, of course, you can go to the review that was done. But there are a couple of differences with these two pistols. One of the things, though, is all most of the parts will interchange. Grips, magazines, a trigger safety lever, some of those things. Uh, one of the things that's really different that I noticed right up front, the cut for the magazine release is a little bit different. It's more squared off on the uh, Frasier than it is on the Baby Browning. Also, the sights are a little bit lower on the Frasier. Uh, the Browning does have a little bit of a raised area here, and then at the back, it's a little bit thicker. Uh, and that's just some stylistic marks. But one of the real significant differences is in disassembly. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these magazines. And we're going to disassemble these pistols just so you can see the difference. Uh, with the Browning, of course, you bring your slide back and just engage the lock. There are two slots here, one for safety, one to disassemble. You take your barrel and you turn it counterclockwise. And then when you bring the safety down, you can just remove the slide. With the Frasier, same thing, bring up your safety into that little notch position, but then the barrel goes clockwise to disassemble. And that was really to do away with some of the patent infringements and to make the Bauer or the Frasier just a little bit different. Uh, the funny thing is, the barrel uh, for both of these will work. So, you know, they are interchangeable. It's really the slide cut itself that's different. Right here are the slide cuts that make a difference. And as you see the lugs, you just turn it, but then to bring it out, you just have it straight out and it comes right out. With the browning, it's the opposite direction. And that's really the only difference. It's a very simple change, but one that's definitely significant as far as with the U.S. Patent Office. <laughs> the internal parts are really close. Uh, one of the differences I've seen is with the baby browning, it's a little thicker right here on the back of the frame, whereas on the bower, it's a little thinner, the Fraser. Uh, and then also the part that retains your striker. It's also just a little bit thicker with the browning. But otherwise, these pistols are pretty much identical. But to look more at the Fraser, just for disassembly, uh, bring out your striker assembly right here. And it has the firing pin with the spring and then, of course, the uh, back part here. It's a three-piece assembly. This can easily be uh, disassembled for cleaning. With the recoil rod, there are two springs that work here, and then it's captivated. So we just leave this together. And this is pretty much field strip. You can take the grips off. You can take the parts off. Uh, but really for cleaning, this is all you need to do. To reassemble, just take your um, striker assembly, place it into this groove. Take your recoil guide rod, place it in, and there's a little cavity back here that it slips into. Then take your barrel, slide it into place, and go ahead and turn it. And then we're going to line it up with the hole in the slide with your recoil guide rod. And it can be a little tricky at first. And then go ahead and get it in that second slot where your barrel is just sticking out a little bit. And then we're going to turn our barrel, release our slide, bring the safety all the way down, Return the magazine because of the magazine safety disconnect, and then we're ready to go. The Fraser weighs 9 ounces, and the Baby Browning weighs 9.3 ounces. Uh, just a couple of small differences, I believe, with the metal, especially with the sight area that cause a little bit of weight increase with the Baby Browning. Uh, the barrels are 2.10 inches in length. The length is 4 inches. The height is uh, three and three quarter inches and even with the grips the width is just under an inch at about seven eighths of an inch with the baby browning it's actually just a little bit thinner but that's just because of the grips now i like to show caliber and to give you just an idea because there are a lot of different people that watch these videos and some have just uh, have a curiosity for these small pistols some people own these and carry them for concealed carry uh, in fact this pistol the fraser that i bought uh, the guy's wife had carried that gun for a number of years. And because of that, we just want to talk a little bit about the uh, power of these little pistols. We have the 22 long rifle. Here we have the 25 automatic or the uh, 6.35 caliber, which for European standard. And then we have the 32 and then the uh, 380 and then your 9mm. 
really, as far as a recommended self-defense, the 380 and the 9mm, even more so, are really uh, good self-defense rounds. You start getting into 32, and then the 25 and 22 are really uh, not really suitable uh, for self-defense, but one of the things that I always say is, is you go with what you have. And if this is what you have, then by all means, use it. But really, if you're serious about self-defense and concealed carry, you definitely need to look at a little, little bit higher calibers. Um, but I know that a lot of people have these pistols. They're going to carry them anyway. So just make sure that you have good shot placement if you ever have to use something like this in a self-defense situation. Really a lot of fun to shoot at the range. One of the things, though, that I noticed the difference between the Baby Browning, which is a blue steel, and the stainless steel of the Frazier, is the Frazier seemed to be a little... Uh, more gritty with the slide and uh, you know a lot of times stainless steel will gall and I think really um, I didn't lube this pistol and so I think that may have been a couple of issues that I had uh, I know one time I pulled the slide back and I was having a little bit of issue uh, it just felt a little bit gritty and typical for that galling of stainless steel so uh, I'm gonna lube this up really well with some frog lube but um, really the accuracy and the overall performance of this pistol was just exceptional Now with the Fraser 25 using Fiocchi 50 grain uh, full metal jacket, uh, pretty decent little group, especially compared to the Baby Browning. Uh, you know, I got a lot of, in fact, I was surprised that the accuracy wasn't better with the Baby Browning. So because of that, went ahead and pulled out the Baby Browning, and right here is the accuracy, which was much better. Um, you know, I haven't shot one of these type pistols in a long time. It's so small and so tiny. Uh, I just wasn't really concentrating on that front sight. And obviously, the accuracy is a lot better uh, than what I was showing in the earlier video. And uh, that makes me feel a lot better. It is tiny. And getting a hold of this little pistol, really, you're only getting about one and a half of your fingers on this grip. I mean, it is really small. But this is made for deep concealment. It's made as a pocket pistol. And really, you just need to grab it and go. This is not made for comfort. <laughs> but with the 25 ACP, it's really easy to shoot. When the Bauer and the Frasers were introduced, they were running about $100 retail. Of course, that's been a good long time ago. The current prices for these typically run between $300 and $350. Uh, at the gun show that I was attending this past weekend, I paid $175 for this pistol. And um, I was really happy to get it. Uh, in fact, again, I wasn't even planning on buying it. I just happened to walk by and looked at it. And just as a curiosity because of the baby browning, and uh, once I saw the price, you know, it was a no-brainer, at least for me. <laughs> you guys know that I, re I really love these little small pocket mouse guns. They're a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, they are super tiny and compact. And um, really, the price typically is reasonable if you want to collect uh, a few firearms. And it really kind of goes away from a lot of the different modern firearms uh, that we're seeing. So just the uh, ingenuity and the design and the craftsmanship of these pistols make them a lot of fun to collect. Now currently, PSA, or Precision Small Arms, is producing a Baby Browning clone, uh, and they are really high-quality little pistols, and uh, they sell a lot of the different parts, uh, and those are currently being made. So if you have either one of these pistols, the PSA parts should fit on your uh, uh, Baby Browning clones. And, uh, but typically, those guns can run around the $799 mark retail. I'm sure street price, you can get them for a little bit less. So the Frazier 25 automatic, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. And then in 1984 began to produce the Frazier up until 1968. Especially compared to my Browning high, especially compared to the Browning. And again, shooting mouse guns, I need to grab me a cigar. I need to man up. The two six round 25s equal 50 caliber. 